Ciao. Welcome, golf fans, pursuers of knowledge and the almighty dollar. This is your golf guru bringing you the 2020 AT&T Byron Nelson. This is my Before the Lock show where I'm going to give you my top five cheapy plays. going to give you ownership projections. We're going to talk weather. I've got some inside info to pass along from the PGA Tour that I think you're going to find helpful. And with that said, thank you for checking me out, stopping by. Give me about 30 minutes, we'll get through this information and it will help you finally lock in those DFS plays that you want to play and also maybe some last minute bet ideas. And with that said, let's go talk some golf. Okay, so some quick information I want to pass along. You're going to notice this anyways when you go to probably pick your teams, but if for some odd reason you've already locked in your teams, you're going to want to make some changes. So I highly doubt that you have Nick Watney, but he has WD from the tournament, was replaced by Jim Noss. And then uh, the one that you definitely want to, if you are playing Brooks Kepka, he has also withdrawn, and Sadoshi Kadir has taken his place. And last but not least, Brian Harmon has also withdrawn from the tournament, and uh, Chase Seifert will be taking his place. And then from a presser side, uh, the only one that's come out right now, there's a bunch of big ones that are happening after the Pro-Am today. Uh, I think Scheffler, JT, all the big names are doing their pressers, but Xander did a presser yesterday. And really the only thing I found uh, that, I want to pass along uh, that is of note is that I guess he wasn't feeling so well. And I don't know what that means. If he had a stomach issue, if, if he actually hurt himself, but he said after the Zurich, he did plan on playing uh, the Wells Fargo, but uh, so he's here to uh, get some reps in. Uh, I think he played like maybe nine holes. I don't think he's played a lot of golf. It is definitely stated how I took it was. This is definitely a warm up uh, for the PGA. Again, not stating he doesn't want to come out and do his best and possibly win, but I would probably tender my expectations of what Xander will accomplish here, but who knows? Um, you know, we'll see. But I just want to pass it along. Of course, you can find that. Uh, I've told you guys, if you go to YouTube, what I look at is uh, 10 Golf, T-E-N Golf. They have all of the pressers that come up. Um, if you go on the PGA Tour app, you'll get like a snippet of it, but uh the full presser is on 10 golf. The next piece of information I wanted to pass over to you guys, uh, pulled this, uh, the PGA tour provides this stuff. Um, this is how they, you know, the guys that are announcing sound so smart, but uh, with some interesting information and uh, the short of it on the left here, what you're seeing is pretty much this course is one of the easiest courses that the PGA players play all season long. And you also will notice that I, um, in my comp courses, which I was pretty excited to see, quite a few actually came up, uh, like TPC Summerlin, that's where they play the Shriners. Caves Valley, that was the one I pulled in. That would have been for the BMW last FedEx Cup. Um, again, Summerlin shows up. Let's see over here again, TPC Summerlin. There's TPC Deer Run uh, that also has uh, Bent Greens. But most birdies um, on the season last year was at TPC Craig Ranch. Most Eagles was uh, TPC Craig Ranch came in fourth. Um, under Average under par, it was fifth out of these courses. Uh, easiest greens to hit from 125 out. Of course, they're very large greens. Highest birdie or better percentage inside of 125 yards. TPC Craig Ranch uh, was number one. Best score to par uh, last was uh, TPC Craig Ranch was second. And then easiest scrambling, so chipping around, uh, not very difficult from around the green, hence why I kept that out of my model. It was also fourth. And then maybe most, I think, more interesting, uh, especially from a play stand, if you want to know the guy so far on the PGA Tour this season who has the most Eagles, funny enough, Taylor Gooch with 15. You got Mad McNeely at 12. Sun JM is not in the field. Uh, Patrick Rogers at 11 and Sam Ryder 11. They are both in the field. And then if you want to see who has the lowest par three scoring, which I think this is not a bad little stat because I'd say one of the course defenses outside of wind. Um, and Xander did mention his press conference that during his uh, whatever nine holes, it was quite windy. And uh, we'll talk weather in a bit. But uh, again, Taylor Gooch, number one on par three scoring. Tom Hoagie is in the field. Um, he comes number two. Will Z, Mark Leishman, and Aaron Wise. All those guys are in the field. So if you also need to tip you one way or the other and you want to see the guys that are doing the best on the par threes, I just thought that was kind of interesting. All right. The last thing I did for you, what, you know, I try to always do this whenever we kind of go to a new locale. 
Um, like if it's the Florida swing, if it's the West Coast swing, uh, way I look at, we're kind of kicking off, even though we've already had the Bolero. I mean, we've had kind of the Texas swing, but we're back in Texas. So whenever we go to Texas, I always like to say, hey, here are the guys that are locals. So here are these guys were born and raised in Texas. They live in Texas now, or they played college golf at Texas. And I'll highlight some of them that I know. Uh, Johnny Vegas, of course, played at the University of Texas. And what I did was I took all the guys with Texas roots, and I might have missed one or two, but I think I've got the full list. Um, but if somebody out there says, hey, you forgot this, that's fine. Put it in the YouTube comments below. I took my model and uh, over the past 12 rounds, no filters, and I wanted to see guys from Texas with some Texas roots uh, where they ended up. And why, why we even ever bring this up is that typically they're used to playing in the wind. They're also used to the grass type surface. Um, and uh, some of them might be able to get to sleep in their beds. I'm not saying most of these, but some might be local, and that's always a nice thing when you don't have to stay in a hotel and eat out. So long story short, the guys that came up, uh, you can see in the top of my rankings against my model, I mentioned Johnny Vegas played at the University of Texas, still lives in Texas. Of course, Will Z, I believe he played at TCU, um, but played a ton of surrounds with uh, Scotty and Spieth. Uh, so, you know, we know the Scotty Shufflers, we know the Jordan Spees. My Austin Smotherman, I believe, over here also played at TCU. Sebastian Munoz um, played at Northern Texas. Uh, so it has some. Cameron Champ, who I mentioned uh, when they played the Valero, his home course is uh, TPC San Antonio, and he lives in Texas. Dylan Fratelli, uh, he's a South African, but makes his residence up by Austin, I believe, and uh, is really close when they play the Dell match play. You know, I like to play him there. He kind of shocked the world a little bit coming out of his pod last year. I don't think it happened this year, or he wasn't. I don't know if he was even in the WGC. But Dylan Fratelli is kind of interesting. He is local. Um, hits the ball a ton off the tee. Can get hot with the irons. Did have a win at the John Deere, I think it was a couple of years ago now, which is Bent Greens. Um, so just a little side note. Harry Higgs, big Texan, uh, lives in Texas. Hoagie played uh, his, his college golf, Bo Hosler, got Kelly Kraft, Ryan Palmer, which you've been watching golf a while, another big name Texan. Um, Carlos Ortiz, just like Sebastian Munoz, played at North Texas. And then you got Kramer Hickok and Ben Coles. I know Kramer Hickok uh, played his college golf in Texas, and Ben Coles has some Texas background. So there you go. If for some odd reason, I have noticed um, that I, I do like to build some lineups with a bunch of Texans. Um, they typically do pretty well. And again, it's because of the grass type surface and the winds. Okay, let's go jump over to Fantasy National. Let's go do some quick analysis on the guys that are technically 71K and below. I'm gonna, I've got about uh, 15, 16, I believe, that I was interested in playing. And then I've uh, narrowed it down to give you my top five. Okay, so I've jumped over into Fantasy National. And as always, my quick commercial for them is Hey, if you want to do your own uh, analysis and research, I highly recommend it. It's a very easy tool to use. And of course, I do share quite a bit with you guys, but there might be some things that you want to see that I don't do. So give it a look-see. What we are looking at, uh, I've got no filters turned on. I'm not looking at comparable courses. All I'm looking at is the last 24 rounds of golf these guys have played. So that's the data that we're looking at. Um, hence, that would be about six tournaments. And uh, it's DraftKings pricing. You're going to notice that. So I apologize if you are using FanDuel or, you know, whatever, um, Yahoo, then the price is going to be different. But again, you can still use these guys. And uh, we're looking at the same mini model that I used yesterday when I did my picks. That is uh, the five key stroke gain areas or stroke gain analysis areas, I guess the best way to put it. Uh, heavy on approach, ball striking, that proximity 200 out, right? 35% of the shots coming in. Uh, I believe you you really just want to worry about driving distance, as I like the guys, that, especially for these par fives, we really got to take advantage of them. You got some long par fours, and you got some really wide fairways, so I'm not too worried about them getting off wayward. And then uh, the par fives, we need guys that can really either eagle or have birdie opportunities every time. I still got birdie or better gained, uh, so that's what you're going to see. That means that you have an opportunity uh, to make a birdie or an eagle. And uh, you've got recent results and tournament history. And, of course, we got one year of history that we really want to reference here. All right, with that said, the first guy that I landed on is Sahith Thagala. Um, you know, of course, just a Pepperdine stud. We saw him almost win at the Waste Management. 
had a good finish at Sanderson Farms. The guy is going to be an elite talent. He's like, I'd say like some of the other guys, it's going to take a little bit of time. I mean, you know, his putting kind of goes up and down. I have seen the driver get wayward. You see here what's been identified is that his irons coming in is where kind of his weak leak has been. Um, but for the price, I think he's one of the better values. And he's got that distance and he can score. We know that. We've seen that in the past. Um, TPC Scottsdale, I think, is a good uh, course to use as a comparable. You also need to go pretty low there to win. He's never played uh, at this venue before, so just a little heads up there. But you can see he's made his last five cuts. Uh, best finish would have been at Valspar, which I didn't even bring that up. So you also got the waste management, which I believe he ended up third. We'll go click on Sahith. Um, you can see he's got a little pop in the bat. Uh, I mentioned he can get wayward off the tee. What I noticed is that sometimes he'll get the hooks. Uh, but again, we can allow for that. You can see a pretty good putter. And... Um, over the wet little bit of sample we do have, positive on bent. Funny enough, I'm kind of interested about this, that what he must have played in one event that he had a crazy wind. And so you can't really go by that. Don't get too nervous that he can't play in the wind. And if I just click this, uh, it'll tell us where he's had his best finishes. So the Phoenix Open, which is the waste management. Um, there's that Valspar, Sanderson Farms. You know, all pretty tough courses, which so if he can do that on these, should have no issues uh, handling TPC Craig Ranch. And then if I click on where's he had his best putting performance, the Fortinet, which would be the old Safeway, should be, well, it's bent. I always think it's POA because it's over on the west side. It is bent, so that is a positive. So one of his best putting outings has been on bent greens. That's Bermuda, that's Bermuda, that's Bermuda, that's POA, and the Memorial. I just want to verify is bent. I thought so, but just wanted to verify. So anyways, he's had some positive experiences with the putter. Um, and that's the one area that I think, uh, as you see here recently, has not been the best. So he has a good putter, could do very well. Scott Stallings, you know, he had a little bit of a hiccup. I, I think I even picked him last week, kind of burned me. He's had actually two hiccups. The RBC, honestly, I mean, that course I did mention is, Kind of open up a little more to the ball strikers, but I, it's not where I would typically want to play Stallings. You can see here at the Valspar and the Valero, kind of bigger boy courses. He does have some distance off the tee. He also played here last year and had a T3. Hence, I already kind of knew that, kind of was already thinking about Scott Stallings. Um, you can't really go on these down here again because that's at Trinity Forest. Total different track, Bermuda Greens, shorter track. But you can see his proximity 200 out. He's up there, top third. Uh, he's got driving distance, and uh, he can score on par fives and has been doing pretty good with uh, getting the opportunities to make birdies or eagles. I mentioned average driving distance, about 300 yards. Accuracy can get a little wayward. Uh, his surface that he has gained over the last 12 months was Ben Poa. Ben's showing up as the worst, but don't get too worried about that. It's 0.2, nothing significant. Uh, you can see it's also saying wind is not his friend, which I'll take that because he's got quite a bit – 274 tournaments uh, to go against. And you can see the putter is what's been costing him these miscuts uh, when he was at the Valero on the Valspar, went kind of nutty at the Valspar on Bermuda, gained eight strokes, gained almost four on Bermuda, Valero, and Texas. So you can always, I like to look at that, see how these guys are done in Texas. He's done really well at the Farmers. That's, of course, West Coast, POA, big boy course. Um, at Torrey Pines, South, and, of course, they play around at the North. There's that Byron Nelson that I just talked about, the third. I'll just scroll down and see if I see anything else that pops out. Memorial, that's a while ago. Charles Schwab, that's bent grass, but that's a while ago. John Deere, that's bent, but that's a while ago. There's that Fortinet um, this past fall where he had a six. Sanderson Farms, a little more recent. I actually remember that pretty vividly. And there's Valspar. And then the Valero, he's had some good showings, again, some Texas events. So I like Scott Stallings. And I didn't make a note uh, or should have said off the bat, I don't think you guys really need to go too low. I think there's uh, a lot of value between 7K, um, unless you're getting a little nutty up top in the 10Ks or have a lot of nines. I'm not saying to play these guys, um, but if you guys are already down here, which I'm building some builds that's going to use some guys in this range, um, these are the guys I recommend. So that was kind of my precursor. 
All right, I'll move through the guys that are not highlighted pretty quick, but I just want to kind of give them uh, a little uh, a mention. So Carlos Ortiz, right, his only win is in Texas at the at the Houston Open. Um, it's been not the greatest, you know, but I think I mentioned at the Mexico Open that Carlos was battling two things. He had a, a shoulder injury, and he also had – he was passing um, – uh, whatever bladder stones or gallstones, whatever you call it, kidney stones. There we go. And um, but you can see he's done pretty well in Texas at this tournament. He had a T21 last year at the Mexico Open. I think he probably would have liked to have done a little better. He had a T51, but you can see this string of missed cuts, which has got his price way down. I'm not saying Carlos Ortiz is a stud. I'm just saying for 7K, you could do worse. You can see he's got some distance, um, pretty accurate. You know. Pretty good putter on POA. And if I click here, you're going to see that Houston open win. He had a good showing. Uh, we'll call it the vacation swing right here. Both of these are Mayakoba. Also good showing at Sanderson Farms not too long ago, which would be about a year, uh, at the Waste Management, TPC Scottsdale, which I think is a good comparable. Uh, you got the Houston open again where he had a good showing. So anyways, I think you could do worse than Carlos Ortiz for 7K. Wyndham Clark is on here because the guy you can see right here, Number two in driving distance uh, can do some decent scoring. He's made the last four cuts and played here last year and had a T39. So that's about as far as I'm going to go with him. Clark, typically not a bad putter and a good driver. It's usually the irons that can cause him some issues. You can see that that proximity to 200 out uh, when he's approaching from that is not the best kind of, well, towards the, the ladder of this field. Doc Redman, which... I don't know if I picked him in my cheapies last, but uh, I think I thought about him. Or I at least gave him a notable mention like I am doing now. Still a really good ball striker. It's typically the short game around the green, which not a big concern. Um, but the putting is what typically is a concern. When that goes off, he does show up. You can see pretty high. I mean, I have 150 guys, 156 to be exact. He's number 32. And you can see out of his last five events, he's made three cuts. Best finish at the Valspar. And played here last year and had a T9. So another reason why I'm bringing you guys' attention. So let's click on Doc just real quick. I want to see. Um, you can see he's not the longest, but pretty accurate. And he is positive on Bermuda. I just want to see what that putter's been doing. So the Wells Fargo, here you go. Why he missed the cut, lost three and a half strokes to the field. At uh, the Valero, he gained almost six strokes, gained two at the RBC. So he has, has been putting better. Uh, you can see the round of green. It's pretty rough. And typically, I think of him as a pretty good ball striker. Of course, he came in second behind Nate Lashley on Bent Greens at the Detroit Golf Club. So I remember that off the top of my head. We can click on that. He also had a good showing at Palmetto. That, I'm going to confirm, but should be Bermuda Greens. Yep, that was uh, kind of a plug-in last year event. There's that Rocket Mortgage I was talking about, the Fortinet. Uh, we just found out that that is Bent. We confirmed the Wyndham's Bermuda, Bermuda. There's the Byron Nelson last year, which is Bermuda. And while we're at it, let's go click and just see where he's had some of his better putting performances. So in Texas, but that is Bermuda. The PGA, I believe that's Harding Park. That is bent. So good to know. And let's click back here real quick. Uh, the Rocket Marshall. So he's had some good success on bent. Uh, 3M Open, that's bent greens. So, yeah, I think he's a good play. I mean, he was close to making my top five. And I probably will sprinkle them in depending on how many bills I had. I actually, you know, I I know what Emilio Grillo can do. Um, you're going to see a lot of ugliness here. Actually, he hasn't played at this event, but he gave me a, just a little bit of hope. Had a good opening round at the Mexico Open. Ended up a T33. I'm kind of waiting for Emilio to get back to being a elite ball striker and being a terrible putter. That's typically an end of he pops with a putter. He could easily top 10. Um, he did have a good showing. We'll go look. I think it was at the Genesis this year. But anyways, he's got this. is pretty accurate. I mean, he hit a ton of fairways at the was it the Mexico Open. I was sitting there trying to figure out if it was in the Wells Fargo. Uh, you can see very accurate over his past 12 months. And you can see right here the issue is the putter. Says he can play and win. Side note. And you can see the Mexico Open. So the putter actually was okay. Um, the irons were not super hot. And you can see that the one thing that Emilio Grillo used to be pretty damn good at was the irons and he's been struggling there the driver has gotten back in form around the green is never going to be great and the putter is going to be very hit or miss 
And if I click on this, so he came out, I think his first event or pretty close to as a rookie, not too far off from what um, Aaron Wise did, you know, win right off the gate, coming off like the Corn Ferry or the Web or whatever it was at the time, and uh, then has struggled to, you know, match that up. So you see all this, not too far from an Aaron Wise, you see this amazing ball striker, but just can't seem to put the short game or the putter together. Um, I mentioned his good showing. Let's go to this. Let's go date. All right. So the Genesis, he ended up 21st. So that was like the last time he really kind of showed he had any kind of form. I mean, for a while there, he was firing. I mean, he also showed up at the open at 12th, had a 12th place. There's Charles Schwab that is in Texas. That is on bent greens. Um, RBC, we had a second not too long ago. It was a waste management. He had a 22nd. Again, not a bad comparable. So I'm going to take a flyer is where I'm going with all this. And that would be my differentiator guy play. He's only 1.4, you know, less than 2% projected ownership. And so this is, again, talking about a large GPP. This is not a cash game play. But you're going to need to find that guy down here that pops. And that unlocks, of course, a ton of value up top. And that's why we look at these guys down here. All right, Nate Lashley, of course, he withdrew from the Wells Fargo. It states he had a bad toe. I think it was partly he was quite, a, I don't know, like five or six over at their first day. Crappy weather. I think he said, I'm out of here. I'm not giving up on him, right? I mean, look at out of his past five events. Now, get rid of that WD. He has a T11, a T18, a T15. He did miss cut at the RBC. Um, but the guy is pretty good off the tee, good irons, and can get hot with the putter from time to time. So I don't have a problem. I will try to play a little bit of Nate Lashley. Funny enough, I'm going to go with Hudson Swafford on a few fronts, right? So when I think of Hudson, I think a really good ball striker. I know it's hard to believe, but he is a good ball striker. Um, he has, a, you know, what, three wins on tour. So you're getting some win equity. He's had four made cuts here uh, in a row. And you can see he did miss a cut here last year. So that's a knock. But he's 25th in my model ranking. You can see he is scoring on par fives. He has distance. Good out, outside of 200. Um, we go click on Mr. Swafford. He's typically done his damage. So he's got some pop in the bat, accurate. You can see, can, you know, do it over his last 12 months, has been positive on bent. But if I click this, right, so the Amex, kind of a shorter track. Um, and I believe, I want to click on that. La Quinta. I believe there are Bermuda. Maybe one is Poa. It doesn't matter. Um, Neither here or there. I was just curious for myself on the, the grass types, but I forget that they have that three course rotation for the Amex. Let's get back on Hudson Swafford real fast here. Um, and let's see where he's done his best. So Corrales, pretty good size track. Of course, that's past Palom. Again, two wins at the Amex. The Palmetto uh, shows up again. Um, he does well at Corrales. So what I was getting to is I always think of him as kind of the vacation swing play. Also weaker fields. The Northern Trust, I think that's at Liberty. And I was for a moment, I was trying to think if that was here. Let's see. This is should be Caves Valley. So there's that comparable course where guys went like super low. Um, it had some distance, and it was Bent Green's par 72, but the guys just torched that course. So he had a pretty good showing there. So I like Hudson. I'm going to give that a whirl. And then, of course, uh, Austin Smotherman. I'm going to keep touting this guy. I'm going to keep playing him. And um, he's kind of my cheap Will Z play, 6,600. You can see ownership starting to get up on him. I think people are uh, starting to clue in that this guy is a pretty good ball striker. He just needs that around the green and putter. So you can see elite ball striking and driving distance. He's not super long. Has been not making, again, the putter and the chipping will cause you a little bit of issues on the par fives. But you can also see he's made the last four out of five cuts. He's got a T25 at Wells Fargo, T25 at Valspar. Played uh, Trinity Forest, so don't mind that uh, that miscut. And then he also right showed up at the Farmers, which I believe, yeah, he ended up at 11th. Um, so, again, that was West Coast, Poa Greens, Torrey Pines. San Antonio Championship. Yeah, this is that one that's played at TPC. Now, I've had some mixed information on this that it's not actually played at that course. It's played at, like, the sister course or whatever. But neither here or there. Um if it is, you know, Davis Riley actually won that. You can see Smartman came in fourth. Taylor Pendrith, crazy length. I haven't seen him in a while. Um, just total side note, Taylor Pendrith. I don't know what, what's going on with that guy. 
Uh, but anyways, Austin Smotherman, great play. I like him. And then I'll give you my notables, uh, just some mentions. I already mentioned Bo Hassler, local. You can see he's got a lot of opportunities. He kind of burned me a little bit. I had him sprinkled last week at the Wells Fargo. You know, he had a pretty good showing there in the past. But he had that, you know, really good showing at Valero. He also showed up at, what, the uh, AT&T Pro-Am? Let's go take a look at that real quick. Yeah, Pebble Beach. So he had a third, a fourth. You know, he's had some, you know, close chances uh, to do something, I guess, best way to put it. So, yeah, I think he would be a good play. You can see really low ownership right now. Charlie Hoffman, I'm putting him up here purely because the guy, when he goes to Texas, typically turns on another gear. But his game has been horrible. And you can see that represented right here. Let's go take a look at the old Hofster, the old waste management boy. Um, maybe it was just a fluke when he had that crazy run last year in the summer. But his last time that I remember, yeah, it would have been, I think, his first round at the Phoenix Open. Let's go take a look at this while we're here. Just for something to do. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure his round one. Yeah, he shot a 67 round one and then just puked all over himself. So that's the last round of golf I remember Charlie Hoffman. And I say he hasn't had another, but that's the last one I remember. Um, but if you want to get a little different and if he does go off or at least gets a top 20, you know, for that price tag and low ownership, might be a little bit of unique play there. Uh, Joseph Bramlett, he's here purely for two reasons. One, he had a good show in here last year at T7. He has crazy distance and can score on par fives. And uh, it's all about the putting. And he almost made my top five. I'll let you in on that. Because he's just he does one thing very well. He can drive the crap out of the ball. But he's also, as you see, a horrific putter. But if somehow the putter goes you know, neutral and he's okay with the irons, uh, he could get you. Let's go see. He had a couple wins, I think, on the Corn Ferry that popped him over here real fast. I don't see on the PGA Tour. So funny enough, the Byron Nelson, there you go. That was like his best showing on the PGA Tour. Um, he didn't make my top five. But again, if you're putting that bomber lineup together, he'd be the guy. Luke Donald also showed up here last year at a T13. He's also been, you know, I told you for a cheapie. At one time, I was telling you guys to play him. If you were like 6,100, he was making cuts, man. It's still... Um, really good is around the green and putting has been really good he's very short off the tee you can see that right here um at one time was your world number one player i think without a win i think he had so many runner-ups that he still made your uh, world number one so i threw him in there uh matty wallace he's in here because he's been having like one or two good rounds and the last time that matty wallace got us excited was in texas at the valero so that's why i'm bringing him up He's, you know, he does have the distance. You can see the irons have been popping. You can see the driver has been going a bit wayward and the putter. But if we look at his last, let's see where his best putting outings have been. Um, I was guessing the Valero would be up here. Charles Schwab, that's been grass. He gained two. I mean, you can see he doesn't have a whole lot of uh, great putting outings. Let me do this a different way. I just want to see what he did it when he played. Uh... So he also had a good showing at the Zozo. Just wanted to see that's a smaller track, and I'm guessing past Palm. All right, so that Shriner, so that's also a good comp course. So he did have a showing this past October. Wells Fargo, the Valero, there we go. So Arnold Palmer, so he had a pretty decent run. I don't know, if you call it like uh, early spring last year. And then, man, is he kind of fallen wayward? I mean, he had this little spurt. So it's kind of like what he does, right? I mean, he kind of goes on a miscut. Festivus. I don't know. I just think it's an interesting play. Maybe more of a showdown play. I actually bet him. I think uh I think he had some crazy odds. On a side note, talking about betting, and that's a little bit why I have Brandon Hagee here. I know I, I skipped Sun King, I'll go right back to him. But Brandon Hagee, I don't know what his odds are now, but I got him early on at 800 to 1. Now I purely bring that up because Hagee has one elite thing, and it's he can score on par fives, and he's got crazy driving distance. Last time he came close to winning, I believe it was at the 3M Open, but you, there you go. You can see it can get wayward, but he definitely could hit it far. And funny enough, he gains on bent greens, huh? I didn't know that, so I learned something new every day. 
So then, okay, it was the Honda where he had a chance to win. Um, I think he fell apart on Sunday. Rocket Mortgage can bang it all over that place. Um, and it's bent greens. There's waste management. So there's some things that show up that, you know, again, I just wanted to bring it up from a betting perspective. You can also play them. Um, you know, I would maybe think of them for a showdown play if you really want to get a crazy stack team. But anyways, yeah, low ownership. Now, Sun King, he is in here. I mentioned this. Um, this is his home course. I think he's probably the only guy that I can even think of that TPC Craig Ranch is your home course. And, uh, of course, he won the Byron Nelson, but it was not on this track. He was T47 last year, and it was so funny. I mentioned this, that I was all over K Sun Kang and then KH Lee, which also had really good odds. I think he was 200, 250 to 1. It was, it was good odds, and I missed it. And, of course, I always tell you guys, I get a little bothered if I miss those high odds. Um, we have a better field here than we might have ever had for the AT&T Byron Nelson. So, you know, it's why we're going to get some crazy. But I also bet Sun King again. I think he was 500 to 1. When I say I bet him, I'm talking like five bucks, you know, like something pretty minimal. Just if in a happenstance, I, I got to just have a like a FOMO bet, right? I mean, if, if they did go off and I didn't have something on them, I would be pretty upset. All right. The last guy I'm going to mention to you is Bill Haas. This guy, except for the Wells Fargo, has just been making cuts up the wazoo. And he is men price. So if you are building that lineup that you are at dead 6,000, this is the guy to play. Um, I didn't want to actually do that. Let me do this. So you can see here, what we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight made cuts. Um, and then he had that Phoenix he missed, but he had a couple made there. And then he missed at Wells Fargo. Of course, the weather was terrible. So I'm going to give him a pass on that. And again, I might sprinkle him in if I get that kind of crazy build that I want to do where maybe I'm trying to squeeze. I don't even know this is doable, but I think Scotty Scheffler, Will Z. I don't think you can get Spieth in there, but like another, like maybe Burns, something like that. Um, and you're, you're going to be, you know, needing to be in the sixes. So not saying that's the build to go with. I'm just saying if you got a little nutty, there you go. All right, let's go talk about ownership projections. All right, so the precursor I always give here is this is a number over here we want to look at. What does this mean? That people have actually generated lineups. That means these guys are in DraftKings. So it's a pretty good number. And we want to look over here on projected ownership. And funny enough, uh, we're right off the bat. Justin Thomas is your number one projected ownership at almost 31%. We'll see how that all cooks out. Again, this can go up a couple points, go down a couple points, but it's usually pretty accurate. If you see these stars highlighted, these are my picks, so it can kind of tell you where I'm at, but uh, Will Z's coming in number two, Burns, um, and then let's see here, Johnny Vegas, of course, Joaquin Neiman too. That's a little interesting. Um, let me go take a look at Joaquin real quick. I know, of course, he uh, lit it up at uh, the Genesis, so, yeah, he had a good show on the West Coast. He missed cut at Honda on the Florida Swing. Pretty good show on the players. Pretty good show on. So, yeah, I mean, I can understand that. And um, just trying to look at his stroke gain stuff. Yeah, I mean, he's firing on all cylinders. And so it could be a price thing. 9300 So, yeah, I guess when you get to that part. I don't know. He's not really on my radar. Now, I do like Joaquin for a showdown play. But, um, yeah, right now he's not in my full kind of four-day classic builds uh, for a large GPP. All right, moving on. Johnny Vegas, I think he's going to be super chalky at 8,400, you know, so that could blow up a lot of lineups. He could miss the cut, uh, but everybody, you know, that we're seeing, he should do very well. I like that Shuffler's down there a little bit. I mean, he's not super low, but give me, you know, give me Scotty over these guys and that ownership. Um, I have no problem making that play. Aaron Wise, we knew he'd be chalky. Hideki's up there, Hadwin, the Gooch, um, which, you know, I think that's pretty smart. Like I said, I showed you he leaves, what, at a, what was it, par three scoring, and I forgot now, most Eagles uh, this year. So, George Spieth, uh, I, I like him for the one and done, and not, he could do great here, no issues there. But um, that price tag, maybe, like I said, I, I don't know. Uh, I felt like that RBC Heritage win just didn't do it for me. Uh, Lanto, funny enough, at that price tag, I think a lot of people are seeing what I'm seeing is that he's having some good some good golf. Um, Mad McNeely, Kurt Kitayama, Mitchell, people are going to go back to. 
DJ, you know, he's one of my picks. And this was part of the reason why I went with DJ is if I'm going to be in that 10K range, um, this guy has done amazing in Texas and I have no issues. And it, I think it's the narrative of is DJ like a Brooks Kepka? Is he here to win? Is he here to really give it his full effort? I really hope so. Uh, hopefully it's just not a pre-tune up. So that's going to be the risk of playing DJ. Alex Norton had a good show in here last year. CT Pan has been playing good. I'm going with Patty Kazire. Uh, also had a great show in here and has done well in Texas. And a pretty good price tag on him. You know, Xander from your upper is one of the lower plays. So that's kind of interesting. I like Munoz. He's out there at 10%. Uh, Sahith is at 9%. So I think people are seeing that value that I was mentioning. Cameron Champ actually was one of my picks. I should click that. Um, and I think... Did I pick me, Smith, too? I don't remember now, to be honest. Um, anyway, so Champ, of course, local. He could go either way. There's some other men. I think people, like I said, are starting to figure out that uh, if he's going to be priced at that price, I think you're getting a lot of value. You're getting uh, a blue chip stock that is in the future. That's how I look at it for a really nice price. I'll move through some of these. Um, you can see as I scroll, Matthew Wolf, 6%. I think that... That could be a huge game changer. We know Matthew Wolf can win. Uh, he's competed in majors. He's been in a bit of a funk to say the least, but we did see some life and we're going to jump on that and see if we can hit something that uh, is really nicely priced. Uh, there's my Swafford and Kokrak. Kokrak, man, getting no love. So that also could be a unique play. Now it could also go totally sideways. If people have been watching golf and look at the uh, analysis that, hey, on one side, you can see he's not been playing that great. But if you look at what he's done on Bent Greens, if you look at what his game should be able to do, and then if you look at what he's done in Texas, and hey, he just won the Charles Schwab not that long ago. He's also won, what, three tournaments now? I know he won. His first one was at Shadow Creek. What was it, the CJ Cup? I feel like he's got more than just two. Let me look here. I could be wrong. Okay. Yeah, so y'all, Okay. That's what I forgot. The Houston Open, he just won. So he put two wins together in 21. Um, Texas, Texas. So, hey, um, let's do it, man. I mean, at 5%, let's, I'm ready to roll those chips. Of course, Kepka with Drew. All right, and uh, Ryan Palmer at, uh, of course, another local. Your past champion, no love for him. There's another Texan. Kuchar has done very well uh in texas and been playing good golf so that's a little shocking um might want to put a little bit of kuchar into your lineups don't worry about the lashley that's just um i think it was from previous looking at here's my scott stallings at two percent get you some leverage anybody else i'm just seeing if anybody else starred emiliano grio there's my big yeah if he pops uh i could be in the cash i think that's it then you just got a lot of kind of sift it's Morgan Hoffman actually also with Drew. Um, not that you care, but remember he uh, medical exemption. Uh, we saw him play. I forgot now what tournament it was, but it wasn't that long ago. All right. That gives you a good understanding from an ownership projections. We'll look at the weather. All right. So we're jumping over to WindFinder. You are going to want to pull up McKinney Municipal Airport. Of course, we're in McKinney, Texas. It is right next to this place and had it from previous years. So first thing I'm going to look at is the super forecast. What does that do? It just gives me hour by hour. I recommend that. Um, we'll also go jump out in the future to look at, but it really gives you kind of an understand what they're saying. And no shocker, um, I am not really too concerned about AM, PM splits, but for showdown, uh, that is going to be a consideration. You can see it is going to get pretty blustery. So, you know, it's up to you. You could build some stacks. I already looked. There's some... Nice little stacks you can put together. Um, if I remember off the top of my head, I think DJ's down here, early tea time. So just go to PGA Tour, click on tea times, and that'll help you out. Hold on, let me get rid of that ad. And um, Xander's down there. I think even Grio is early morning. I know I just bring that up, but. Um, and then Friday, kind of the same thing. You know, looks like morning's going to have a little better in the afternoon. So that's why I said, you know, is there really any big advantage to play a PM versus an AM? At least right now, I don't see it. And then to look at Saturday, Sunday, I got to go to just click at forecast, not the super forecast. All right. So again, we're going to have some wind. 
looks like uh, for some reason, 10 a.m. is going to pop up, go back down, and then pop back up late at night. But guys should be off the course by that time. So looks like stating that morning will actually be windier than afternoon. I, whenever I see that, I always kind of question it. And then Sunday, you know, they're going to have some wind to deal with, period. That's what it looks like to me. So all I tell you guys, I pull this up for you so you know. Go to WindFinder, use it, Holt McKinney, especially if you're doing Showdown. Um, and this is more for the, the newer folks that are getting into DFS golf. You know, the guys that you're playing against, they're doing this stuff. So, all right, let's uh, jump back over and wrap this up for you. Okay, so my top five cheapy plays, these are guys that are priced 7100 7, usually it's 7000 Number one, Austin Smotherman, I believe he was, what, 6,600. Elite talent, played at, I believe, Texas Christian University. Uh, I think he even played with DeChambeau or might have just barely touched each other. I think he's an elite golfer. What I mean by that is an elite ball. He's got the talent that if he can hone the short game and the putting, he could get himself into conversations of some of the other rookies, like a Cam Young that we're talking about right now. Um, Scott Stallings had a great showing here. Uh, had pretty good showing right at the Valero and the Valspar. Has elite distance. Needs that putter to be hot. Could be a great play. Emilio Algrio, this is the almost like the Matthew Wolf call. You know, maybe... Sometimes us analysts that we've been watching these guys for so long are just like, hey, okay, at some point this has got to click back and we don't want to miss it. So that's part of it. I'm being totally transparent, but I am going to take some risk. Um, if I build, let's say, 20 lineups in a large GPP, he would be maybe in three or four. So don't, it's not like he's going to be played a ton, but I am going to, just in case he pops, he has such low ownership at what, 0.2%. So uh, yeah. And it could happen. He's had some good showings before. He has won. It's been a long time. So hit the gala. Um, yeah, these are in no order of price, but of course he's my most expensive in the cheapies. And of course he's already shown us what he can do. He can go low. Uh, Lee talent. And Hudson Swafford. I almost kind of look at him as a bit of a condom play down here in the cheapies. Also like a Bill Haas. Like if you're looking for a guy to get you to cut, I don't expect Hudson Swafford to go out and top 10, top 20, but can he get my 6-6 six six through and give me enough points? Yes. On a side note, I forgot, but uh, no, it was one of you um, told me if you guys are interested that Mr. Uh, Smotherman there is, what, two and a half, uh, two and a half to one to, uh, to top 40. Okay, so let me say it again. Uh, this is Smotherman. If you want to get him a, a two and a half to one, on your money so you know put 100 in you win 250 and uh if he top 40 and i think that's a great bet so i like that bet and then i also threw uh, why we're on the top 40 conversation sun king is five to one to top 40 now remember home course has won the, the byron nelson before i mean there's some loose things there but uh I, I threw a few bucks on it so okay so real quick let's go over the one and done i went over this yesterday but i just want to show you again if you missed it you got scotty shuffler you know I'm saving him for a major, but I'm, you know, he could easily win this tournament like he has won the past four. I like DJ. You know, I'm trying to figure out where am I going to play DJ. I'm thinking the FedEx Cup is where I might be saving him for, but you know, you could definitely use him here. Will Z, if I had him, would be probably my number one play here. Also, Jason Kokrak, if you're looking for that kind of crazy differentiator one, if you are way down, you're going to have to get creative. I, I would like a Munoz would be not a bad play um coke rack would not be a bad play again if you got to move yourself up and have that you know low percentage ownership of course burns if you not use them i used them at the valspar that worked out very well aaron wise i still have him to spin this would not be a bad place to spin him but i'm actually i don't really you know i think jordan spieth he's in texas he's coming off a win i did not pick him in my top 15 but i'm thinking from a one and done for some odd reason i want to play him it's almost like hedging so if i somehow did not come out well on the dfs side or the betting side if so like if if spieth wins this thing or you know, say he comes in second whatever uh i'm not going to do anything on the gambling side and i'm not probably going to do a whole lot on the dfs side unless it's showdown i will probably play him here and there in showdown but i will feel better that at least i you know hit him on one and done so that's kind of my thought methodology if you're asking well wait a minute if you're picking him for one and done why the hell are you not telling us to play him from a dfs that's why. All right. With that said, that's going to wrap up my shows for the AT&T Byron Nelson. Do me the honor. Click that like button. Share this with anybody else. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. 
and oh by the way uh someone did ask hey typically i do a giveaway for the majors and i'm actually gonna be traveling uh this upcoming sunday monday tuesday so i'm not sure what i'm gonna have out for the pga it's a very rare thing for me if possible i'm trying to gonna get a preview show out before i leave if i can get enough information to do that if not I'm going to be giving a lot of stuff, probably do like a preview and pick show on Wednesday. So I'll get it all done. It's going to be here. And just don't freak out if you don't see anything on Monday, Tuesday, because I will be on the road. So with that said, hit me up on Twitter also. If you guys have any questions, anything I can help you out with, YouTube comments, you know, if you're between players, I will answer you to the best of my abilities to give you that uh, help. All right, guys, let's have an amazing at and Byron Nelson. All the luck to us. And uh, I'll talk to you guys, well, Probably be next Wednesday, if not sooner. All right, take care.